Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth interactive study of the Word of God. I'm excited we're continuing a series, Present Truth in Deuteronomy. Today, a beautiful text about loving the Lord your God. My prayer is you'd not only catch a glimpse of how much God loves you, but you would experience the immeasurable, unfailing love of God today. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School and welcome to the team. Good to be together again. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited because one of our team, Travis, is going to be teaching our study today. And we've also got some of our team joining us remotely, which we found is working really well. So we want to welcome Glennie in Florida. Glennie, good to have you with us again on Hope Sabbath School. Shana, good to have you with us from Maine. Glad you're here. And Jonathan, good to have you with us from Maryland. Great to have our remote uh, team members with us too. And we're also happy you're here. You know, someone corrected me. They said you have over 200 countries and there's only 193 recognized by the UN. Well, go back and do the math. There's about 215 additional countries that aren't recognized. And our Hope Sabbath School app, our Hope Channel app, has been downloaded in more than 200 countries around the world. Amen. So we're oh, hearing sorry, from sorry. you and we're glad. Here's one from South Africa, awesome. Blanche writes, and she says, I want to thank you for the work you do for the Lord. Amen. I've been learning a lot from the Word of God since I studied with Hope Channel. I can't wait for the coming of our Lord and Savior. Keep doing the good work. Amen. 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 Well, Blanche, we're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family there in South Africa. Here is another note from Kenya. We have Hope Channel Kenya called H HCK, and it's played across the nation. A lot of Hope Sabbath School members. This is Thomas writing from Nairobi. It's amazing what Hope Sabbath School is doing, touching lives around the world, much more during the health pandemic. Mm. I personally like the flow of the program, starting with the greetings, the song interlude, and finally, the study. <laughs> the format not only makes the study more interesting, but it makes us feel part of the program. Amen. By the way, that's why interactive teaching is so powerful because everybody in your group feels part of the program, right? Mm -hmm. Needless to say, the Hope Sabbath School outline simplifies the study. May God continue to use you mightily. Well, Thomas, sounds like you're using the outline to lead a study. You're part of a multitude around the world. We're glad that you're not only part of our study, but you are sharing the word with others. Amen. Here is a note from a donor couple. Hope Sabbath School continues to be a blessing to us. Your group's experiences and knowledge of the Bible is truly inspiring. Thank you for your prayers, blessings, and a donation of $2,000 to help Amen. Hope Sabbath School. Praise, Praise, the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to say thank you, California. <laughs> Actually, no, not California. It's... South Dakota. Yeah, right. Thank you, South Dakota, for being part of the miracle. We're an impact movement, and you can be part of it. HopeTV.org slash donate. We're here coming to the end of the year. We're glad that you can partner with us. Thank you for your support. Every, every gift makes a difference. Well, all the way to Tracy in the Seychelles. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our, our most recent Hope channel is Hope Channel Indian Ocean, oh. launched in Madagascar broadcasting Madagascar, Mauritius, Réunion, Seychelles. Here's Tracy. Mm. Tracy writes and says, my family and I watch Hope Sabbath School on YouTube every Sabbath. Wow. We're blessed for this opportunity to learn more about God. My husband and I have been baptized for the last four years and still look forward to learning more about God. Amen. Amen? Amen? Amen. As our church is still closed because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. we thank you for Hope Sabbath School. God bless you all. Well, mm -hmm. Tracy, uh, you don't have your husband's name here, but greetings to him too. Aren't we glad they're part of our oh, Hope yes. Sabbath School family? Yes. Way out there in the islands of the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. yep. Someone's watching Hope Sabbath School today. We're, bl we're glad you're part of our family. And it looks like I've got one more from my homeland. My homeland, you see, Derek, where's your homeland? <laughs> I will talk with a British accent to read from someone who wasn't born in England, Dumisani. Dumisani writes from the UK, 
I'm always blessed by your interactive Bible study. I jot down notes when I'm listening <laughs> and apply them when I teach my Sabbath school class. Amen. I'm also the first elder of my local church. Amen. May God bless your ministry always. Elder Dumisani in the UK. Amen. Well, thank you for writing to us, Dumisani. We're glad you're not only part of our Sabbath school, but you're a leader in your community. And right now we need you all to sing with us. Our theme song's taken from Deuteronomy 31.6. It says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He's the one who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Let's sing it together. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who Fear nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not, will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, do not fear nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. What an incredible promise. He says, I will not leave you or forsake you. And I believe Travis is going to be with us as we study the Word of God today. So thanks for leading us in prayer. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, so grateful that you've been with us here in this series of studies in the book of Deuteronomy. We're also thankful, Lord, to hear the emails from people all over the world to get letters. Uh, what a blessing it is to know that the program is impacting uh, people from all over. Lord, right now we just ask a special blessing on our group here, that the Holy Spirit would attend us and teach us as we open your word and study it right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 The study today, to love the Lord your God. Well, I have to be honest with you, I didn't know what the Shema was until I read the, of course I'd read the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy several times, but I hadn't known what the Shema was. So I got to look uh, to see what it was, and of course it's a prayer. And today we want to start in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Billy, if you'd read that for us. And we want to know, or we want to find out what truths are contained here in the Shema. Okay, I'll be reading from the NIV. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your, our God, the Lord is one. So what truths do we find here in, in uh, verse 4 of Deuteronomy? Mm. The Lord is one. The Lord is one. We call that monotheism, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, of course, uh, uh, we live in a society, or, or even back then, a society where there's uh, poly, polytheistic uh, beliefs where there was many gods, right? We saw that with the children of Israel. Matter of fact, God had warned them to have no other gods, plural, mm -hmm. before them, right? Mm -hmm. And so here, uh, this Jewish prayer, of course that's meant for us today, right? Mm -hmm. is, is letting us know that there's one God, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's read verse 5. Nicole, if you'd read verse 5, let's look at uh, another uh, part of the Shema. And the New Living Translation says, And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Okay, so why is this also important in the context of the Shema? Mm. I think it's just, you know, what we've been talking about in this series is, is mm -hmm. that God wants a relationship with us. That's right. He's not just some great God up in heaven, but He wants us to respond to His love. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Back to the previous verse, the Lord, our God, our God. Mm -hmm. Lord is Yahweh, right? Mm. It's my Bible is all capital letters. Yeah. It's like the, the one who was and is and is to come. Mm -hmm. He loves you <laughs> and he wants you to love him in return yes. mm. with all your heart. Mm. 
-hmm. And he loves us all, right? Our God. Right. Mm -hmm. Our yes. God. Yes, Sabina. Travis, I'm thinking how those two verses are so connected in context to what they were experiencing. You know, if you look at the surrounding nations to the nation of Israel, they truly, the, the, they were polytheistic. Monotheism is really a concept that comes here uh, with the Hebrews, right? But further, they were also serving gods that had no relationship with them, that mm. couldn't care less about having this type of uh, loving and kind and, ch and caring. They were actually incapable of love, right? Exactly. They were actually just willing and expecting to receive favors. That's how they would see uh, mm. gods at that time. So for me, it both uh, show God as not only being the one true God, that is, there is no other God. So it's uh, this um, shout to his uniqueness and his, his unity, but also to the fact that he is distinguished also from other gods, not only because he's one, but because he's a God that relates to human beings mm. in this personal level. Mm. Amen. Mm. Thank you for that. Mm. So what is the significance that uh, the possessive adjective your always appears uh, in the singular? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Stephanie. Oh, I, I, Stephanie and then uh, Jonathan. Well, it just makes me think that he wants to be our personal God. He wants mm. a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with me. So he can, we have, we serve a corporate God, right? He's our God, but there's a, there's a, when it comes to relationship, he wants it one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. right? Jonathan. Yeah, just the same thing that um, it's not just this um, corporate thing that is impersonal. It, it is a very practical, uh, personal relationship that um, with all our heart, with all our individual might, that, that this connect. What is it? Pastor Derek keeps saying? The real connection with God. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Shana, you had a comment? Yes. Yeah, so even though when whenever God would speak to the children of Israel, he was speaking to them as the nation on a whole. But then those same messages that he was sending to them could be applied individually. And if if each individual person in the nation of Israel took those messages to heart, mm. um, their outcome would have been quite different than what it, it resulted in. Mm. Good point. Mm. Anyone else? And one thing, Travis, that stands out is that the your heart, your soul, your strength, I mean, that's God wants and desires my heart mm. and to love him with my strength. As a father of three little ones, each <laughs> child expresses love in a unique way. God wants the way I express <laughs> love and, you know, my heart. Um, and that makes it real personal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so someone else, that kind of launches us into the next question is what does it mean mm -hmm. to love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind? What does it mean? Mm -hmm. Stephanie, you're smiling. I think it's purposeful, right? It's not, it doesn't automatically happen. Mm -hmm. We have to be intentional about giving Him every aspect of our lives. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nicole? It also calls into the, the, the um, idea of obedience. Mm. I have to get my heart, my soul, and my might in obedience to what God wants for me. And that for me is what, what shows that I love Him, is that I'm allowing myself and all of me to be in obedience to what He wants for me. Mm. Mm. And, and it's not, uh, Travis, it's not just personal like, like John said, it's total. Mm. It's three times, all, all, all. Everything. So this is like a complete surrender mm. Mm -hmm. to yeah. a loving relationship with a God who loves us with an eternal love. Mm. That's beautiful, Derek. Thank you. Glemmy. And like Pastor Morris had mentioned, when we surrender everything to God, it rattles our priority list. And before we do anything, the question we ask is, Lord, does this make you happy? Is this something that pleases you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, and, and the Jews looked at this as, Jesus demanding love, but was he demanding, like commanding this love, or or or, is, or was he wooing and drawing, wanting uh, love in return for a love that he had already given? Yeah. Go ahead, Sabina. I think that just going back to the previous question that uses the adjective your, 
I think the Bible makes it very clear that those things belong to us. God ha <laughs> has given to us. We have our individuality. He respects that space, that freedom He granted us. But it sounds to me in, in saying those words, the way that He speaks them uh, express His desire of drawing us close to Him, how much He wants us to respond to Him and not that He is obliging us to that. Mm. Uh, naturally, a love relationship cannot be enforced. No, the love uh, requires, necessitates freedom. And mm. it doesn't sound to me like here he is requesting people to love him uh, out of force, but mm. he is asking them, is pleading them, begging to really respond to his love that is already offered freely on his end. Thank you, Sabina. I agree. And uh, you, as you were just speaking, um, thinking about the word your, is that we belong to, we belong to God as much as He belongs to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, so it's this beautiful, right, interactive relationship that we have. Maybe it's a promise. <laughs> it doesn't say you mm -hmm. must right. love the Lord. It says <laughs> you shall. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe when mm -hmm. I jump into that relationship, because I don't have human relationships that are like that, right? Mm -hmm. This is like, mm -hmm. this is the perfect love relationship. That, that is a promise. You shall. Mm. You know, when you mm. surrender yourself fully to God, you love Him with all your heart, mm -hmm. soul, and mind. That's yeah. beautiful. It is beautiful. We've learned what it means to love God. Let's explore what it means to fear the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to ask Lemmy if you would read from us from Deuteronomy 6, verse 2, and then uh, Sabina, if you would read uh, 10, verse 12 after that, please. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Mm. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Mm. Thank you, Sabina. Mm. So Deuteronomy 10, uh, verse 12, I'm reading from the New King James Version, and it says, and now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, and to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul? Mm -hmm. Okay, so with these verses in mind, what does it mean to fear the Lord? Mm. Nicole? I would say that I would equate this fear to having awe of who mm -hmm. God is. Okay. And for loving Him and just... You know, it, it's not the scared kind of fear that we would think of when you hear the word fear, but it's more of a, you know, you, you, you fear the awesomeness that God is and who He is to us in our lives. Mm -hmm. So in awe of, John, you're smiling. What yeah, you absolutely. <laughs> As Nicole said, I think it, it's something of, of reverence and respect. Okay. You know, in, in the context of this, this is God who, having appeared before the Israelites, really in, a, in thunder on the top of a mountain with lightning, uh, and so it was a reverence for, mm. for God's presence, for His power, mm. okay. which had delivered them. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it has to be that, doesn't it? Because yeah. it says to, rev to fear the Lord and to love Him. You cannot love someone you're afraid of. Mm. Yeah, right, yeah. You can't. Perfect love will cast out that fear. But, but, but you can love someone that you reverence and respect, mm -hmm. right? Because he's great and awesome mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can conclude, well, of course, we could dig into this for the whole study, right? <laughs> but that to fear the Lord means to have respect, to have awe, mm -hmm. uh, and just to, uh, to reverence God, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what, what can we learn from the expression fear um, from the psalmist? We're going to read from the book of, um, from the Psalms. And uh, Stephanie, if you don't mind reading Psalm chapter 2, uh, verse 11. And then I would like Shana to read uh, Psalm 19, 9, the first part of that. And then Jonathan, if you would read uh, Psalm 34, 8 through 9. Let's see what we can learn about the expression, the fear of the Lord. Mm. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Hmm. Okay, to serve the Lord with fear, mm -hmm. he says. Well, let's read uh, 19.9. Sh Shana, would you read that for us? 
Yes, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It says, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The fear of the Lord <laughs> is clean, enduring forever. Okay, and then Jonathan. Uh, Psalms 34, 8 and 9, reading from the English Standard Version. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, or for those who fear him have no lack. Mm. Well, it sounds like we hear some, some reverence mm -hmm. uh, coming from the psalmist, mm -hmm. right, from King David. So what can we learn about the expression to fear the Lord? Go ahead, Stephanie. In addition to re um, reverence, I see that it's saying taste and see that the Lord is good. So I, I feel like it's an experience. Those that you respect are those who you've had an experience with. Yeah. And those you've had an experience with, you respect and therefore you can love them. Mm. Mm. So all of those are tied together. Mm. That's an amazing point. And I, and I believe that's tied together with, with what Derek had mentioned too, is that you can't have love and fear mm. yeah. in the same, uh, you know, in the, afraid, right, in the same context, kind of right. Yeah. I love, I love <laughs> from Psalm 2, 9 where it said, rejoice with trembling. Yes. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's like the little child that? standing in front of someone really important that they, they're just like, you know, it, but it's not... It's, it's not, not afraid trembling. It's not afraid trembling. No, it's not scared. It's just this, oh, I'm yeah, here, yeah. you know. Excitement. Yes. Anticipation. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. a beautiful verse to an appoint, Derek. Perfect love casts out fear. It does. Yeah. So they're not in harmony with one another. Sabine, I'm going to come to you after Shana. Uh, you had a comment, Shana. Yes, I'm also thinking that a significant part of fearing the Lord of, is being obedient to whatever the Lord says. And so he's given us his law and a part of experiencing who God is, is by following what his law says. And he's given us those laws so that we could have a better way of life. <laughs> and and through being obedient to those laws, we can see, wow, I have a loving father who really loves me. And, and then that fear can be ex exhibited through through that connection. Mm. So we'd be obedient because we respect God. Is that mm -hmm. what you're saying? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Perfect. Sabina. What I'm thinking, Travis, is that mostly, most of us, usually we fear things that we don't know mm -hmm. or things that we know and that we know they are going to harm us, right? <laughs> so you only fear the things you don't know very much where you are getting to the territory, so you may be afraid, or you are going to fear someone that is going to truly be violent to you, or going to harm, do evil to you, and then you want to run away. <laughs> and I don't think the Bible teaches us anywhere that God is trying to do us evil. So going back to what Stephanie was saying, I think that indeed it cannot be the same type of fear also of those who do not know something, but actually some sort of a relationship that is established with someone who you know, mm. right? And not this type of fear that is human of someone that doesn't know what they are stepping into, what's the territory that they are wandering in. Mm. So does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's a beautiful point. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, well, David had a son. His name was Solomon. Of course, if King David feared the Lord, respected him, um, loved him, he probably would have taught his children to respect and fear the Lord as well. So we are going to read um, what Solomon, what King Solomon had said about fearing the Lord. And uh, Glennie, if I could have you read uh, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. Let's see what King Solomon uh, has to say about the fear of the Lord. And it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's interesting in Hebrew parallelism that the, the reverence for God and the knowledge of the Holy One yes. are parallel. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and this, I think, is not just an intellectual knowledge, but it's a relational knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so you see that together. And it's unfortunate in English that we have to use that word fear because we always think the negative, mm -hmm. being afraid. Loaded. Yeah. Uh, right? It's kind of a loaded term. Yeah. But uh, the fear of, the, um, so perhaps we should always say fear of the Lord. That fear of the Lord is dependent on my relationship. Mm. If, right. if I love him, 
and, and he's my God. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a holy reverence that I'm shaking with joy. Yes. Uh, but, but if I'm in rebellion against him, and I know that someday a judgment is coming, it, I can be shaking yeah. with, with a, uh, uh, mm. being afraid. Mm. Mm. It all depends on the relationship. Okay. Okay. Of course, that makes yeah. sense in the yeah. fact that we serve a creator God. Mm. Yeah. He deserves to be feared, right? I mean, to be in awed and in reverence too, because he's God. Yeah. He hung the moon and the stars in their place. This yeah. is God. Yeah. And so it's a beautiful thing. Well, the, one of the last messages, I say one of the last messages given to the world, because the last message given to the world is in Revelation chapter 18. But in Revelation chapter 14, the beginning of the three angels' message, it mentions to fear God. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're familiar with those passages, but I'm going to ask John if he would read Revelation chapter 4, 6 through 7. And uh, why is there this appeal to fear God in, one of, again, the, one of the last messages to the world? Yeah, no, gladly. Revelation 14, 6 and 7, New King James says, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Well, this is kind of building on what Derek had mentioned earlier, that perfect love casts out all fear because the context of fearing God is, or it's in the context of the everlasting gospel, which is what? Good, good it's news. Good, news. good news. So to fear God is good news, right? Mm -hmm. So, so why, why does this appeal to fear God? Mm. Why the appeal right at the end of time, right as the, the moments of earth is, are closing, why the appeal to fear God? Jonathan. Yeah, I think that fearing God does um, appeal to that which uh, fear does as well. I guess, like, I mean, if, if you see something, you see a bear, you're like, whoa, pay attention <laughs> to that bear. What's he going to do? And I think God, in a sense, we do have to, whoa, pay attention to God versus maybe other things in the world that are trying to cause us to fear. So there's that sense. But I think it, it is, there is a judgment. I mean, it says the mm -hmm. judgment hour has come. And like Derek said, I mean, if we are holding on to the ways of the beasts, the ways of these, these false um, kingdoms, then that, 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 that time will be a time of fear or, or, or things, um, our hearts will be laid bare. So I, I I, I feel like we need to not completely disassociate it from fear because it is, I mean, there's plenty of verses that, that combine both. Hmm. Well, of course, we know that God isn't described as a bear. He's the <laughs> lion of the tribe of Judah, but he's a lamb. So we, I mean, he's described but, as the lamb of God, right? So we're not going to be afraid of a little lamb, but Jonathan, I think you made a good point. Yeah. Thank you. So the prophet, uh, Isaiah says that when the redeemed see the Lord come, they look up and say, Lo, this is our God. We've <laughs> we waited, waited for Him, for him. Yeah. and He will save us, right? Mm -hmm. This is the Lord. We will be glad and rejoice mm -hmm. in His salvation. Now, by the way, when we're saying that, the clouds are rolling back like a scroll, right? Mm -hmm. He's coming with 10,000 of His angels in mm -hmm. glory. Mm -hmm. So I think there'll be a little bit of Noise. awe, oh. right? <laughs> Reverence. Yeah. But, but, but it's mixed with joy because of the relationship. Yeah. But in Revelation six, chapter 6, sixteen. you've got people crying for rocks, rocks yes. to fall on yes. them sure, yeah. and saying, hide us from the face yes. of him who sits on the throne, oh, yeah. 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 right? And from, from the, the, lamb. Of the lamb. It's the same event. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Right? Hiding from a lamb, Derek. Well, it's the same event. But, but back to the relational yeah. issue, they... they They've never yeah. accepted and embraced the, the love of the one who's mm. coming. Yeah. So I think, so maybe what Jonathan said is right. There is a fear both ways, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a reverence and an awe, mm -hmm. but then uh, when you don't know Jesus or have that personal relationship mm -hmm. um, and he's coming in the clouds of heaven, they're scrolled back. God is returning to this mm -hmm. earth. Yep. Yep. It's yeah. going to be a frightful time to those who haven't, Given their life to him. That's mm, right. Mm. Sabina. Now, what I was thinking also, 
You know what, uh, the other side of love, which is part of love is justice, right? So we cannot have love without justice mm. and without God work in the day of the judgment. So I, I need to, to go with what Pastor Derek is saying. I really think there is an aspect of that that is this fear of, yeah, there will be a judgment. And I don't think we should have that as something bad because it's the shape of love being expressed, you know, in the universe and God finally bringing things uh, that are for our own good as well. But it happens that you need to choose well, right, uh, to be even, on God's side. <laughs> even the yeah. judgment is good news. One pastor said yeah. uh, judgment um, is such good news that it's actually skewed in your favor. Yeah. So it's unfair in the, in, the, in the fact that it's skewed in your favor. So mm -hmm. that's just an amazing thing. Uh, John, and then I would like to go to Glenny. Oh, no, go for it. Oh. She oh. had, I was pointing at her. Oh. Oh. I was just going to, I mean, I was just going to say that, um, you know, there is a point of relational aspect of this. And I think that our relationship with Jesus will determine our mm. fear in the end of the at mm. end of time. Mm. But even those who don't have a relationship with him, he still loves them. And he's going to do for them what they've chosen, which is not to be with him. Mm. And so we can even see that as mercy and love that Jesus has, mm. even in the end when we do not choose him. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Lenny. Yeah. It reminded me that what will happen towards the end of history reminded me of what happened in the beginning of history when Adam and Eve had a such a close relationship with God, but because of sin, now they were afraid. Oh, yeah, that's that added another element into the relationship. Mm, good point. So, yeah, but of course, they had no need to be afraid, right? Actually, he was looking for them to put clothes on them. Um, but it, but sin can give us a, a misunderstanding of the character of God. Yes. Right? That's what sin does. Well, while some people uh, are afraid of God and others draw near God, uh, or why are some people afraid while others draw near? I know we've kind of brushed over this, but is there a verse in the Bible or a story in the Bible where, where we can see people actually really afraid of God? Mm. Anybody have a very, go ahead, well, Nicole. You mentioned Revelation 6. Uh, Revelation 6, verse 16 talks about the mountains falling and, mm. you know, people wanting to be in a situation where they are afraid of the coming because they have not chosen to be in a relationship with Christ where they would have a love and awe of Him when He returns. So mm. And it's specific. more than just mountains falling, though, it's true. They were asking for the rocks yes, to fall Yes, yeah, they were asking. Mm. Yeah. They were so, begging for them. It's like, wait. Uh, now, it could be that they've been in active rebellion and, and now they're finally seeing the one, you know, they've been fighting against. But, but, but it's, it's so tragic when what God wants for everyone is, is, eternal life. is to look with joy and say, mm -hmm. hallelujah, our Redeemer's coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jonathan. Yeah, I think that um, Exodus 20 actually paints an interesting picture here where you have God coming down on the mountain with fire and with terrible things. And the people uh, are, are terrified. I mean, literally terrified. And they're like, whoa, what is this God? And in a sense, I mean, Christ refers to it later. I can't remember the exact words, but it, it, God uses that to help them to respect, to have awe, to take him seriously. But then right afterwards, Moses comes to him mm. and, and says, do not fear for God has come to test you that, that the fear of him may be before you. So I, I feel like the whole package has to be kind of combined. So it's, it is a relationship, but, but it doesn't, but there is something to this. Yeah. If you're taking, not taking him seriously, maybe you may need to fear him. So. Mm. Yeah. Well, we know that uh, God wants us to love him, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, But I agree with you, Jonathan, there. Uh, if the mountains were shaking and smoke was coming down in the mountain right now, mm -hmm. I think even I would be afraid. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. God can move mountains, and it's good to recognize who he is. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah. Travis, one of the saddest, I think, results of sin is the projection of Satan's character upon God. Mm. And we see that demonstrated in the Garden of Eden. You had asked the question, do we see an example of someone fearing? Adam and Eve hid themselves, and Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden, and, was and I was ashamed, and I hid myself. I was afraid. And mm. so you see fear playing out where we 
repel from God when He is in His mercy coming to seek us. Mm. 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 That's what sin does. That's what sin does. Well, we have to move on in our study. Thank you for sharing that, Mm -hmm. uh, John. The next part of our study, to obey the Lord our God motivated by love. I think that's the key, right? Very important. We want to find out what it means to obey God motivated by love. Stephanie, if I could have you read Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 1. <clears throat> All right, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments, and his commandments always. So what comes first? <laughs> love. <laughs> love or obedience? Love. Nicole love. says love. I say love because out of love you will be obedient. You don't do obedience to love someone. You mm. actually love someone and from that love flows your desire to make them happy. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jonathan? Yeah, doesn't this go back to um, the beginning of our study with the Shema? I mean, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. If we're loving Lord your God, uh, for keeping statutes and doing these things, which is tempting to do and was for the Israelites something they fell into, um, yeah, we're, we're not following the Shema. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to love somebody, right, who's a dictator, who is uh, mm. mean. I know one pastor one time asked the question, are husbands good? And that depends on who the husband is. <laughs> That's right. Right? That's right. <laughs> And uh, so, so some wives would say, I have a great husband. And others who have been beaten would say, not so good, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, but one would love the other, the husband, differently, wouldn't they? Oh, of Out course. of respect. Uh, so, so is it good news that there's a God? Amen. Amen. <laughs> it, would, it depends. It depends. Okay. okay. So the God we know, I would say yes, yes. right? It's yes, good. Absolutely. Go ahead, Stephanie. I was just going to say that. It depends on your view and your picture of God. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And that could, that could be imposed by someone else's opinion of him mm-hmm. upon your understanding. Mm-hmm. And that's so true. And what John said earlier is so true that the enemy has tried to distort the character of God and, and actually make the God look like the enemy. Mm. Yes. And, yeah. and unfortunately, I think a lot of people struggle. What do you mean love God? You know, we're just afraid of him. We see all this medieval artwork and we read all all this kind of like he's some kind of tyrant. Mm -hmm. Why would I, why would I want to have a relationship with a God like that? And that's why Jesus came. Mm -hmm. Jesus Mm -hmm. came not only to pay the price for our, for our rebellion. He came to reveal to us mm-hmm. the character of God. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that God loves us yeah. with an immeasurable and unfailing love. Pastor Derek, I believe that's the truth that sets us free. Yep. Yeah. It's the character, the real character of God, of course, that was uh, in mm-hmm. person, personified in Jesus Christ, right? Mm-hmm. He said, if you've seen me, Mm-hmm. You've seen the Father, mm-hmm. Bill. Mm-hmm. Exactly, because I think the people during Jesus' time, they were seeing the Pharisees. And the Pharisees were keeping the law, but they weren't loving God. So, so Jesus came at the right time saying that, no, the, the, way, the way you should do it, the opposite, where you love me, mm-hmm. and then as a result of loving me, you keep the commandments. It's, it's just, it becomes natural. Mm-hmm. So the Pharisees is a great comparison as to this is what happens when you focus so much on uh, keeping the law but not loving God. Mm. So as a result, you you created a society that's based on class, that's based on um, origin, where you're from, and then you mistreat those who are less for- fortunate. So it distorts that. So the Pharisees now, they're causing people to fear God, afraid of God, because they think that, well, the Pharisees are the most religious. So if if they are like that, then maybe God is similar to them, mm. and Jesus came at the right time to change that narrative. Mm. Thank you, Bill. So, so what we have here is uh, this idea that love to God is, uh, c- comes before obedience, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is, that what, is that what I'm hearing? So where yeah. in the Bible is, is a teaching of Jesus that would support um, this idea? Does anyone know? John yes. 14. John. Yes, Sabina? It's in John 14, 15. John 14, 15. Would oh. you take us there? Yes, of and course. And read that for us. And the Bible says, I'm reading from the New King James Version, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. So he is asking for 
love first, right? He wants right. to um, draw us. He wants us to see his character. Mm -hmm. And when we see that he, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. We've read mm -hmm. that in an earlier study. He wants to have an ex us to have an experience. And then out of respect or fear, he wants us to be obedient to him, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is that what we're seeing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I struggle with that word fear when we use it by itself. Yeah. I yeah. would rather say fear, fear, fear of the Lord, Lord. Yeah. because that's kind of, we now know that's reverence and mm. awe because yeah. perfect love casts yes. out yeah. all fear. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he, he, he does want us to respect him. He's worthy of our honor mm. and praise, mm. but he doesn't want us to be I afraid of him. Lord. Yes, true. Well, how does the apostle John uh, support this idea that our love for God is demonstrated uh, by our loving obedience to His commandments. Mm. Um, Shana, would you read John chapter 1, John, uh, 1 John 5 verse 3, I'm sorry. Sure, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. Okay, what can we learn from that verse? Wow. <laughs> Anyone? That his commands are not burdensome. Okay. <laughs> I think that's just the way it here. sounds, right? Yeah, yeah. just the way the it command, sounds. So keeping his commandments wouldn't be burdensome yeah. To, yeah. to us. Shana. Yeah, and if we look at the verse itself, it says, this is the love of God. So to find the commandments not burdensome would really be a um, personifying the fact that um, we have the love of God in us when we don't find the commandments or His commandments burdensome. Mm. Yeah. So if the commandments were burdensome, as what I hear you saying, Shana, it would be contrary to the love of God yeah. if they were burdensome. Mm. And, yes, be. and I just need to make an addition because depending on someone's perspective, when you say burdensome, they will just think that it will necessarily be easy uh, mm. I say when I say burdensome, and what, what I understand here from Scripture and the totality of the Bible is that they are for our good, right? Mm. They are going to do good for us. It's for our benefit, our prosperity, uh, which doesn't mean that they are not going to cost us certain things that maybe our sinful inclinations are more eager mm. to do. And I think that even in this passage here in First John, if we read the entire context, we are going to see that actually we can overcome the world with the strength that God will provide to us. So I just wanted to make that addition because depending on who is listening to us, is not very familiar, we'll just think that there is no cost, you know, that we have to, to pay in the good sense to obey God and to follow His good will. <laughs> uh, then, but He will help us to overcome the world for our own good. Mm. Did you have something? Now, to thinking of a parent, I used to live on, when I was a young, a young person, we lived in London and we lived on a main road. And I guess, you know, as a parent, you would tell your children, one of our rules, can I use the word commandments, mm -hmm. is you don't run across the road without stopping and seeing if there's traffic coming. That, that is one of our rules or commandments. That is given because you love that child. Yeah, it's not right. because you're trying to be difficult exactly. or because you're being arbitrary, like yeah. I'm a tyrant. Yeah. My rule is, it's because you love them. Mm. Yeah. And I think, I think that's really important. In that yeah. sense, mm. well, I do have to slow down and look, there's the burden, you know, but, but really when I think about it, I'm like, I'm glad we have this rule in my yeah, family. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, I hear people getting hit by cars. Mm. But one of the rules in our family is you don't just run across the road. And I think when we start looking at the commandments of God, mm. coming from a heavenly Father who loves us so much, then we just say, wow, thank you, God. Yeah. Mm. And well, uh, we need to keep moving on in our study. Thank you, Derek. I think that's a beautiful point. Um, but we want to take a look and see what, uh, when compliance to the commandments of God wouldn't be acceptable to Him. When would that be? We're going to look at a few verses. Wow. And uh, Nicole, I would like you to read Matthew 15, verse 8. And then, uh, Jonathan, if you would uh, read Luke 18, 10 through 14 for us. The New Living Translation of Matthew 15, 8 says, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. 
Oh, so heart mm -hmm. worship. It's a lack of heart worship missing here, it seems. Hmm. Go ahead, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, verse 10, English Standard Version says, Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Mm -hmm. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, hmm. extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, hmm. a sinner. Hmm. Thank you. So we have here uh, two people. One <laughs> to say, God, be merciful to me. And another one is proud. I'm glad I'm not like those people. Mm. What do we see here? When is, hmm. what do we see here from these verses mm. that we just read? Go ahead, Stephanie. What comes to my mind is that obedience without a loving relationship is mere conformity. It's not mm. conversion. And Jesus wants that relationship with us, that our lives are changed from the inside out, that our heart is repaired first, and then our, the rest of our being is repaired. I heard Sabina say in an earlier study that God wants our heart. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that the first verse that was mm -hmm. read in Matthew? Mm -hmm. yeah. The hearts yeah. were far from him. Yeah. God wants our heart. He's looking for our heart. Shana, and then we're going to move on. Yes, I'm also thinking of uh, a story in John where he talks about um, men who love the praises of men rather than the praises of God. <laughs> and it, that, that would be an example of people who do the commandments so other people can see that, yeah, I'm doing the commandments of God, but their hearts are not in it whatsoever. And it doesn't matter what other men think because God is the only one who can really see our hearts. And, and that's what matters to him. That's right. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, remember, I think it's in Galatians chapter five. It says those who attempt to uh, be saved by keeping the law have fallen from grace. So that is also unacceptable to God when we do it to obtain salvation because of course, we know that that's a free gift mm -hmm. given to us mm -hmm. uh, by Jesus. That's why we love him, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, we're going to move on. The first and greatest commandment. How did Jesus regard the instruction uh, recorded by the prophet Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5? We're going to, uh, let's go to Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, just to brush up on that. We've read that in a prior study. Billy, if you'd read that. Uh, and then, um, Stephanie, if you'd read uh, Matthew 22, 34 to 38 for us after that, please. Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Yes, and I'll be reading from the NIV. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Okay, Stephanie, and now how did Jesus uh, relate to that? Uh, in the New King James Version, it says... But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. Why is this the first and greatest commandment? Hmm. I think it's the foundation of everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could list the other commandments, of whether it's the Sabbath or um, not stealing or killing, but, but the very foundation is our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so I think he's saying, you know, when you have that, you've accepted the love of God and you're loving him totally. Yeah. Uh, that's the foundation of everything. So you're saying the law, the love is the center of the law. Mm -hmm. It's the center at the center of the commandments. Love right. is the center of God Himself, <laughs> right? God That's who love. He is, mm -hmm. right? Amen. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Well, what motivates us to love God, the Lord our God with all our heart and all our soul mm -hmm. and all our mind? We've brushed on this a little bit. Let's dig into this a little bit more. 
uh, Sabina, if you'd read Deuteronomy chapter 4, 37. Okay. And then 7, uh, 7 and 8. Okay. And, and then I'm going to ask Glenny if she'd re read uh, 33, 3. Deuteronomy 33, 3. Okay, so I'll be reading Deuteronomy 4, 37. Mm -hmm. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, And because he loved your fathers, therefore he chose their descendants after them. And he brought you out of Egypt with his presence, with his mighty power. And then uh, chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. It says, the Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of all peoples. But because the Lord loves you and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Amen. Yes. Buddy. Mm -hmm. I'll be reading Deuteronomy 33, verse 3, from the New King James Version. And it says, Yes, He loves the people. All His saints are in your hand. They sit down at your feet. Everyone receives your words. Mm. Well, uh, uh, well, Sabina was reading. I, uh, I was thinking uh, that He said, I didn't love you because you were more than or mm. better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. He loves us just because of who, who we are, uh -huh. mm -hmm. even in spite of our, well, our frailties, in spite of our um, brokenness. Mm -hmm. God loves us mm -hmm. for who we are. And I thought, wow, that's a beautiful, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful message. If we just had that message alone, we would have the perfect study, right? God loves us in spite of our brokenness. Mm -hmm. And uh, all he wants is our love in return, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Phil, you had a comment? Yeah, I just want to say something that we may miss is that when uh, God is talking about the ancestors, you know, he had that conversation, not conversation, basically that promise with ancestors. That means that God was loving us even before we were born. <laughs> So he, <laughs> he was loving our ancestors, and part of the reason why he was loving our ancestors is because he knew that we were going to be born. And, and just pausing on that, thinking that, God was making plans for us before we were born. Mm. Mm. He was uh, um, designing plans for us. And that level of care that even before we were, you know, cells or zygotes, I don't know mm. the correct terminology, He was still drawing out plans for us. So that's how much He loves us, going back to our ancestors, mm. that He was mm. demonstrating His love for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 You know, one of my favorite verses, I know we're going to come to it in 1 John 4, 19, but, well, maybe we could have someone read that, but, but I want to respond to the fact that we will never love God with all our hearts until we catch a glimpse of how much He loves us. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And that's why I think Hope Sabbath School, that's why I think Bible study is, mm -hmm. that's especially reading mm -hmm. the Gospels, mm -hmm. is so important because ultimately it's His love that draws us mm -hmm. yes. to love Him with all our hearts. Yep. Mm -hmm. We love Him because He first loved us. Well, that's the text I was thinking yep. of in First John 4, 19. Let's, let's go ahead and, and I'm going to have Nicole read First John 4, uh, 9 and 10 and then 19. Why don't we read those texts real quick? First John 4, four 9, okay. 10 through and 10 then, and then 19. Okay. The New Living Translation says, God showed how much He loved us by sending His one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through Him. Amen. This is real love. Mm -hmm. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Verse 19 says, we love each other because He first loved us. Mm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. The cross was the greatest demonstration of love. Mm -hmm. And our response to that is what God is looking for. Right. I want to challenge that translation, but also there are some manuscripts that omit him, the word him. Mm -hmm. So some manuscripts say we love because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. But I would challenge the translation that you just read, yes. which said we love each other. 
And if we're going to interpolate, we would say, we love him and we love each other because he first loved us. Are you mm. with me? Mm. Uh, all of it springs from, from of his love. His love. From right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so like yeah. and we can't. That's why people desperately need a revelation of how much God loves them. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was reading in uh, John, uh, in <clears throat> the book of John, and it says, this is the condemnation. Light came into the world, and men loved darkness rather than, mm -hmm. rather than light. Yeah. So I thought, well, my job is to lead them to love Jesus. <laughs> Who is the that's light? my job. Of course, that's the job of the whole team here at Hope Sabbath School. Mm -hmm. That's the job for each and every one of our viewers, is to lead people to fall in love with Jesus. Not because He's commanding us to, but because He loves us, and He's looking for that love in mm -hmm. return. Derek, mm -hmm. do you close for us? Thank you, Travis. You know, I just, <laughs> I feel so blessed today. I just want to use my favorite Hebrew word, hallelujah. Amen. Because I realize that that many of us, perhaps including myself, we didn't grow up in a family where we saw so clearly the immeasurable, unfailing love of God. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand or where you are at home go, I did or I didn't. I just want to encourage you to read the book, especially read the Gospels and see how much you're loved by God. And First John, boy, what a great letter that is, a revelation that we loved Him because he first loved us. Open your heart to the immeasurable, unfailing love of God, and you will love him in return, and you will love those around you with his unselfish love. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, how we long for the day when all things will be made new and only love will be on the earth. Mm -hmm. But let it be now, even in this broken planet, as we open our hearts to your love, that your love would not only be in us, but flow through us to bless others, that they too may come to know you and love you. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. I tell you, the love of God so deep, and he wants you to experience that love in your life, and then let his love flow through you to be a blessing to those around you.